YouTube. We are back again this week for another video portion of the Daily Dose Sports Podcast. Hope everyone out there is doing well. Hope you're all staying healthy. Hey, this week on The Dose, we're actually doing some Daily Dose Power Rankings. And if you're not familiar with those, we take a look at a certain league or a certain sport and we say who is the best of the best of the best, no matter division, no matter conference, no matter any of that stuff, who is the best? So already we've done Major League Baseball, and we're actually going to jump into college football right now. I know the season is pretty young, but we're going to take a look at who are the best teams in college football right now. So let's jump in. Okay, let's switch over to college football. I know the season is barely a month in, but we are starting to see who some of the top teams are now in college football. Because this past weekend... It was a really weird week, actually. Some of the top teams had some really close calls. The Pac-12 continued to show that the early excitement that everyone was showing about that conference, well, it might have been a little misplaced because UCLA went down to Fresno State. Arizona State lost to BYU. And then you have the Big Ten, who might not be who we thought it was. It looks really deep and really good. It's just that the top teams might be a little bit different than what we thought they were going to be. The ACC continues to be completely confusing. The SEC continues to be really, really tough. And the Big 12, well, I don't know if the Big 12 is having a great year, but that's not really that surprising, is it? There is still a ton of football to be played. But if I were ranking my top five teams in the country right now, and remember, this is not based on the polls. I am just basing this off of who is looking strong. I am just basing this off of the eye test. I'm not looking at, well, you were number one in the polls, and so you have to drop down. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just telling you who I think the five best teams in the country are right now if we were to put them on a neutral field. Let's start off at number five. And like I said, I don't have a ton of faith in the Pac-12, but the class of the league in the Pac-12 looks to easily be the Oregon Ducks. Because remember that Oregon has already beaten that Fresno team that beat UCLA this past week. And then they went into Columbus and beat Ohio State on their own field. And while I have some serious doubts about that Buckeyes team that they beat, make no mistake, Oregon out physical them. They hit Ohio State in the mouth. We're not used to seeing that from a Pac-12 team. But Oregon did exactly that. Quarterback Anthony Brown, he is proving to be at least solid. He's not making a ton of mistakes. He's been very good. And running back C.J. Verdell, hey, that kid's a load. And running behind that offensive line, that is what's making the difference for Oregon, is that they look so stout in the trenches on both sides of the ball. That is why I will put them on this list. Because they're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage on both sides. Their offensive line absolutely manhandled Ohio State. Now, like I said, I don't think Ohio State is very good on that defensive front, but Oregon is also proving to be very tough on the defensive line. They are shutting down the run themselves. The tough part for Oregon is while other teams are padding their resume by playing other ranked teams, Oregon really isn't playing a very tough schedule this year. Next up for the Ducks, you have Arizona, Stanford, and Cal. That's not exactly murderer's row. Then they will go to UCLA, but that's the only ranked team that they have left on their schedule. Remember, Oregon doesn't play Southern Cal this year. They don't even play Arizona State this year. So that soft schedule might end up costing them later in the year, but based on what has happened so far, I would put the Oregon Ducks at number five. Next up at number four, we have a team that we thought could be tough this year, and they're turning out to be really tough tough this year because last season Penn State just kind of found ways to lose games they looked really distracted they really just looked horrible and while some people were doubting him I happen to think head coach James Franklin he's pretty good he wins wherever he goes and so far he looks like he has Penn State back to form and back to their winning ways the Nittany Lions opened the season by going to Madison and beating number 12 Wisconsin Okay, well, maybe Wisconsin wasn't as good as we thought they were. Maybe they were a little bit overrated. Fine. So then Penn State blew out Ball State. No big deal. But then this past week, they hosted what is a very, very dangerous Auburn Tigers team. 
but here's the key for Penn State so far. Quarterback Sean Clifford seems to have figured out how to stop turning the ball over on every possession. And here's the other thing. He's been really, really accurate. The ball barely hit the ground for Clifford on Saturday against Auburn. Sean Clifford went 28 of 32 for 280 yards and two touchdowns. And the Penn State defense held Auburn quarterback Bo Nix to just 185 passing yards. Hey, I know everybody makes a big deal out of the whiteout. I know some people are sick of the whiteout. I actually think it looks pretty cool. But I'll say this. Happy Valley and the whiteout can be a very tough place to play. They pack some crazy fans into that place. And with Penn State playing like this, the Nittany Lions might be the best team in the Big Ten. We didn't think that going into the season. We thought it's going to be Ohio State and then everyone else. Right now, Penn State is putting their name into the mix. They might be the best team in the Big Ten. I will put Penn State at number four. But if there is a team out there that could knock them off for the Big Ten, it's actually over on the other side of the conference, and it might end up being the Iowa Hawkeyes who have proven that they are also among the top teams in the country. You know, every 10 years or so, the Iowa Hawkeyes and head coach Kirk Ferentz, they put together a really tough, really physical, really dominant in the trenches team. And when they get some good quarterback play, look out because they just might be dangerous. Well, here we are. And that's exactly what we're getting this season. Quarterback Spencer Petras, he's not putting up huge numbers, but he's been steady. And he's not making big mistakes. The key for Iowa, though, is that nasty defense. Because Iowa beat number 17, Indiana. They forced Hoosiers quarterback Michael Penix into three interceptions. Then they beat number nine, Iowa State, and forced Cyclones quarterback Brock Purdy into three more interceptions. And here is where things are about to get real interesting. Because Iowa, our number three team, in our Daily Dose Power Rankings, is about to host our number four team, Penn State, in a couple of weeks. Hey, that could be a battle between, honestly, the top two teams in the Big Ten. We'll see how that all turns out. But it might prove to basically be a playoff game. Who would have thought it going into the season? Iowa versus Penn State? Oh, that won't be for anything. It might be for the class of the conference. The Iowa Hawkeyes have been very, very impressive so far this year. They are our number three team right now. Next up at number two is a team that is also looking like they are elite because their defensive front might be the best in all of the country. They seem to have found their quarterback. If he could stay healthy, it would help. But the Georgia Bulldogs are absolutely loaded. Georgia opened the season by beating number three Clemson on a neutral field. And it wasn't just that Georgia beat Clemson. They completely shut Clemson down. Georgia held Clemson to just 180 total yards. They had seven sacks. They forced two turnovers. Since that game, they have now blown out UAB. Okay, not a big deal. And they blew out South Carolina, who might be a little bit better than people think they are. Now, he was banged up for that UAB game, but quarterback JT Daniels, he seems to be the right fit for this team. And he has a number of weapons on offense. So Georgia is absolutely loaded. And like I said, they might be an elite team in the country. Here is the struggle, of course, for the Georgia Bulldogs. You play in the SEC. So there are a number of places where Georgia could trip up. I mean, in two weeks... They'll host number 16, Arkansas, a much better team than people think. They also go to number 23, Auburn. They still have their neutral site game against number 11, Florida. Georgia looks really, really strong this year. But they have a lot of work to do. And if they do all that work, they're going to have an SEC championship game that is going to be very tough as well. The Georgia Bulldogs come in today at number two. So we reach the number one team on our Daily Dose College Football Power Rankings. And I mean, who else can we go with? The Alabama Crimson Tide opened the season by just beating the brakes off of Miami. Okay, well, Miami isn't that great, but Bama whooped them like they weren't that great. Then they crushed an FCS team. No big deal. We expected that. But then this past week, they went to Florida to face the Florida Gators. Now, when you see the final score, you might look at Alabama scraping out a 31-29 to lead and think, maybe Bama isn't as good as we thought they were. 
I look at that a little bit differently. Because remember, this Alabama team, they hadn't really been tested. I know that every year Nick Saban just rolls some more players out and they just keep winning. But you have to kind of do things for yourself. You can't just say, well, we won last year, so we're going to win this year. No, these kids have to learn that they can do it too. They have to get that game experience. And they got some of that on Saturday. Going to Gainesville to play in the Swamp, yeah, that's a test for a very talented but very young team. And while I don't know that I'm fully sold on the Gators being a top 10 team just yet, we do know they're always insanely talented. So when I see quarterback Bryce Young go out and carve up the Gators to start and get that 21-3 lead, I think Bama is ridiculously good. And then when we see Florida rally against that young Bama defense, but then we see Nick Saban's team come up with a clutch stop when they had to have it. Once again, I just think Nick Saban looks like he has the best team in the country for now. Now, like we talked about last week, Alabama does look like they could be gettable, but you had better bring it if you're actually going to beat them. Of course, they have a number of spots they could still trip up to. I mean, Mississippi is lighting up the scoreboard. Side note on Mississippi, I know there's a lot of talk about Oklahoma quarterback Spencer Rattler being the best quarterback in the country. Mississippi quarterback Matt Corral, he looks like the best quarterback in the country. Hate to break that to everyone. I know he doesn't really look like a prototypical quarterback, but Matt Corral is putting up insane numbers. He could trip up Alabama. Texas A&M has a very, very tough defense. We'll see if they can slow down that Alabama attack. Auburn is always a challenge, and that's a pretty good team this year. Auburn might be a little bit better than people think they are. Plus, they do still have the SEC championship game. So Alabama has a number of places they could still trip up and lose a game. And you know the best thing about Alabama having to hold on against Florida? It forces Nick Saban's players to listen to him again. Because he can say, look, you're not working hard enough. And then they go out and they blow out a team and they go, come on, coach. We don't have to listen to him. He's crazy. We're a lot better than he thinks we are. Now he gets their attention. Because now they have to go, wait, wait a second. Florida did almost beat us. Maybe Coach Saban isn't lying to us. Nick Saban might have his players' attention once again. And that might be very bad news for the rest of the country. Now, you might hear our list and you might wonder, where is Oklahoma? Where is Texas A&M? Well, Oklahoma hasn't played anyone yet. And they haven't looked consistently impressive on either side of the ball just yet. The defense looked bad against Tulane. The offense has looked very average and looked really average this last week against Nebraska. So Oklahoma just missed our list. The same can be said of Texas A&M. They haven't played anyone, yet they nearly lost to Colorado. Now understand this, our Daily Dose Power Rankings, it's just where we would place teams right now based off the eye test. But that can change at any time. We'll see how these teams develop as the year rolls on, and we will be checking back in and seeing where teams will rank later in the season. Hey, maybe our list right now is way off. We'll see how these things develop as the season goes. Okay, YouTube, be sure that you go over and you check out the rest of the podcast this week on The Dose. You just heard our Daily Dose College Football Power Rankings, but we're also ranking the top five teams in Major League Baseball because those playoffs are coming quickly. And in the NFL, I know we're only two weeks in, but we want to take a look at who are the top five teams right now in the NFL as well. Plus, we do have some sports news. We will have a Daily Dose Top 5 for you, something to think about where we're looking at some of the powerhouse college football teams from previous eras that are struggling to be relevant in today's game. You might think about that a little bit. So make sure you go over and you check out the rest of the podcast. I will leave a link for you here in the comments on YouTube, or you can go over to dailydosesports.com and check out the podcast there. Hey, I hope you all are doing well. I will see you all next Wednesday. Have a great week.